And good morning, everybody, and welcome into For Your Health, a presentation of Medica Pharmacy. And joining us this morning, or if you happen to be watching this evening here on WBRT and BRTV, is Allison Schwartz of Medica Pharmacy. And and uh, good day good to you. And as yeah. we continue uh, during the month of April, we're going to take a look at the month of May, as because we always have. I, I hate to use the word featured because these are diseases or medical issues that usually are not. Positive, uh, but the month of May is. You tell me that's osteoporosis month. It is. It's one, well one of the many observances. Okay. But uh, we, we've touched on a couple of April things already, and I really kind of you know there was some interesting things that April observes, but none of them had anything to do with health. So uh, I decided to jump right on into into May and uh, talk about osteoporosis. It's a, a horrible disease that affects a lot of people. So I thought we better talk about this. All right. Well, I confused it with curvature of the spine, but it does have something to do with our bones, which is the makeup of our spine, or right. part of it. So. Right, and you can get that, you know, the older women that have that kind of hump back look, that is yeah. due to osteoporosis, because okay. you get little fractures in your vertebrae and it makes them bulge out, so okay. uh, that does come from osteoporosis. So. so so define osteoporosis for me now, since I got it wrong initially. So it's, it's basically a, a making of your, your bones get brittle. And, um, you know, as we age, and especially in women, we'll talk about how um, as women age, their progesterone level drops. And so postmenopausal women have the highest rates of osteoporosis. Progesterone actually keeps your bones growing. It works on the part of your bone known as an osteoblast, and that actually grows new bone. And so when you can't grow new bone, if you're not really taking care of proper bone health and uh, doing exercises and taking right, the right supplements, your bones get very weak and brittle. And as little as stepping off a curve, if you're in bad enough shape, can cause a hip fracture. So it, it affects about, um, really you wouldn't think it's 9% of people over the age of 50 is a lot, but you'll, you'll come down to see that there's about 200 million people in the world that get it, and 10, 10 million people in the United States can be affected by osteoporosis. So but we often see um, hip fractures. Um, you can break a wrist. People have tripped and caught themselves and broken a wrist, but the hip fractures for the little old women can be very, uh, right. very detrimental. And sometimes if you're um, not in the best of health anyway, those hip fractures will land you in a nursing home, and mm -hmm. unfortunately a lot of people never get out of the nursing home once yeah. they've done that. Um, calcium, we always hear about calcium and bone, I'll call it health. Is that anything to do with osteoporosis? It, a little bit. A little. You, you know, it's interesting because you hear all over the news, the TV, the doctor's offices, everybody promotes you need to take um, calcium for your bones. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is, is that when you walk into any of the stores, whether it be um, any pharmacy in town, Walmart, Kroger, Costco, Sam's Club, a lot of people like to go to Costco and Sam's because you can get these huge bottles of vitamin for dirt cheap. And, well, we all know I've talked about cheap vitamins before. The vast majority of calcium products that are over the counter are either calcium by themselves or calcium with vitamin D. And that's all they have. Now, the bad news of that is that they're either calcium citrate or calcium carbonate, two of the most terribly absorbed calcium salt forms on the market. You're going to at best absorb maybe 40% of that and that's only if you have the right amount of stomach acid to do it and a lot of these people are on medications that lower stomach acid which women out there on medications that lower your stomach acid you are at a huge risk of osteoporosis and so you need to find a way to get off those acid lowering medications because it doesn't matter what you take you can't absorb your minerals properly but they're poorly absorbed so not only do they not really work but they can also cause kidney stones and breast cancer Unabsorbed, cal um, unabsorbed calcium is a risk factor for breast cancer. So it's absorbed into your tissue, it's great, but if it <clears throat> floats around in your bloodstream, you're at risk. And those horrible absorbed calciums lead that to that risk. So the key to a good supplement is you need not only calcium, but you have to have phosphorus, chromium, silica, zinc, manganese, copper, boron, potassium, strontium, and then the vitamins are vitamin A, B6, B9, which is folic acid, B12, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin K1, and vitamin K2. Sounds That's a like lot. a multivitamin or a, or a, a good one. <laughs> it, exactly. Yeah. So what I want to tell people is when you're, if some people don't need calcium, it is a little bit like we ever, we push everybody to do it. If you're on a top quality multivitamin and you eat a good diet and you exercise, the amount of calcium and vitamin D in the upper end vitamins is typically sufficient as long as you're eating enough good calcium rich foods. 
If you're not, or if you are a little bit of a risk factor, low bone mass, have a family history, maybe you had early hysterectomy and you went into early menopause and you need a calcium product, you need to look for one that has a microcrystallized calcium. And this is a long word, it's calcium hydroxyapatite. But it would say microcrystallized in the front. If you don't know what that is, please stop by Medica and we will show you the product because it has the vast majority of these minerals in it. Okay. Won't upset your stomach and won't constipate you like a lot of calciums do, but we have seen the vast majority of people on the microcrystallized products do see an improvement in their bone health. So big difference in that, in the cheap stuff. You mentioned um, in brittle bones, a uh, bone mass. Mm -hmm. Can they check for that? Have, have oh, I, yes. Okay. Yes. I, I thought I had maybe even had one of those tests in a, in a kind of a physical kind of you may have there the big i mean the gold standard of bone density testing is is the big dexa scan which is a huge machine it's very expensive um, some insurances pay for it some don't depending on your age and your risk factors we actually can do a heel scan at medica pharmacy um, it's thirty dollars so if you either don't have insurance or if you have a really high deductible and you want to just get an idea are you even at risk for that do you have a little bit of low bone mass it is actually correlates very accurately with your hip Okay. okay, and that's the one most of us are worried about. You yeah. know, you can fracture a wrist or a rib, and it's you're going to go on, but hips kind of keep you down for a bit. So uh, if you are interested in that, it's definitely something to call the okay. pharmacy and talk to us about. I think that's what I had, because they did it with my feet. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So it's I knew uh, it wasn't the big machine, I and mean, when you said the heel, I said, oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, it's yeah. very, it very takes like five minutes. Um, yeah. It's very painless. You just put your heel on the machine. It'll, little probes will come in and just kind of put a little pressure on your heel, okay. which you, you know don't really notice. If you're yeah. overly sensitive, it might be uncomfortable, but I've had it done a couple times, and you okay. don't even really know you're getting tested okay. for anything. So the facts about osteoporosis is that you, it differs between age, what sex you are, what race you are, what ethnicity you are. Um, whites, Mexican-Americans, and other races tend to be higher risk, whereas non-Hispanic blacks actually have lower risk. So we don't, we're not sure what exactly the difference is, but black Americans typically have better bone mass. Hmm. And what's interesting is they typically are the ones that test lower for vitamin D but yet they still have a low bone mass. So then you gotta think of what's different about them and, and nobody really knows as to why can they have lower vitamin D levels because you have to have good vitamin D to absorb calcium no matter what it is. But they typically can, can go on with a low vitamin D and still have better bone mass than the rest of the races out there, which I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. But there's about 1.8 million of men over 50 and 4.5 million women over the age of 50 that are affected with osteoporosis. So, 0.8 versus Four point, okay, 4 so 5. huge difference. There. Huge difference. They also say that men are typically underdiagnosed. And, okay. uh, you know, it's funny. And I guess what I saw the couple times that we did some big osteoporosis screenings at the pharmacy is we had lots of women that were borderline, but the men who tested low were really low. Mm -hmm. And so, I, and I don't know if that's accurate across the board, but, you know, we did see less men, but the men who were at risk had really low T scores. Okay. So um, I'm not sure what the difference was there. They say for you to end up in the hospital, let's say you're going to fracture a hip, that it's about 306,000 people a year, and you end up staying in the hospital for a minimum of six days on average. And then you might have to have some physical therapy, which in, for an older person may include um, them being in a physical therapy facility. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Some of them end up in a skilled nursing unit or, like I said, into a nursing home type mm -hmm. uh, facility where you, some people get out. My grandfather uh, broke a hip. Actually, my grandmother, when they were still alive, she was in the hospital um, with lung cancer, and he was visiting her and fell and broke a hip. So then he ends up in the hospital. Luckily, he did fine in that. Um, he lived in, you know, to a ripe old age of close to 92, so that you know, it didn't get him, but a lot of people it does. Yes. Um, so 80% of women, um, or sorry, 80% of people that get osteoporosis are women. And so that's huge for all you women out there. Um, and you know, a lot of women out there think, you know, I've been through menopause. I don't have hot flashes. I don't have anything. I don't, I don't need hormones, but this is exactly where proper balance of hormones. You may not need a hormone, but you need to make sure your progesterone level is good enough to keep your bones strong. And progesterone is the safest hormone to add on, and it's not the same as a progestin, so please don't go ask your doctor for Provera or Medroxyprogesterone, which actually will make your bones worse. But it is something to consider if you have a family history, is get, at least know what that progesterone level is doing and do you need to maybe add progesterone. A lot of the doctors that specialize in osteoporosis, that is the first thing they will put their patients on, men or women, is some progesterone to help keep those bones strong. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about um, and talk to your doctor about and you know get some information on it before you 
do any other of the crazy bone growth treatments, which we really are now seeing grow you a lot of bone, but they don't really keep you from breaking those bones because your bones that you're growing are not always good quality. You just got a bigger broken bone. That's exactly right. And well, and they, they, they used to teach us in pharmacy school that you should combine the two different types of drugs because one grow, grows better quality bone and one grows just good bone. Well, the most commonly one prescribed is the one that just grows more bone, but not better quality bone. Mm -hmm. And it's also the one that's been linked to, um, if you have to have dental work, to the deterioration of the bones in your mouth and your jaw. So it's just uh, concerning that the, you have drugs for osteoporosis and they're not really doing what we really thought they would do. And so the best way with any disease is, is prevention, mm -hmm. is prevention of it. 1.5 million fractures a year, that's a lot. So if we could prevent any of those, that would be great, but in, in the next, 20 years, it's going to end up being $474 billion to our healthcare system. So, you know, you think about 9% of adults over 50 doesn't sound like a lot, but $474 billion sure sounds like a lot. Yeah. So, lots you of know, stuff going on there. And as you mentioned, you know, we just hear from time to time, I stepped wrong. I did something, you know, it's not like a traumatic incident where your bone, arm, leg, whatever is hit from the side by something. We hear so many times of people, yeah, I stepped there and it a bone broke you know it's like how in the world can you know our bones that carry our body 24 hours a day or if, if we were you know but uh, all of a sudden just with a little misstep nothing really forceful happening do we have a bone break or fracture exactly and, and i remember it's been years ago this is back when our pharmacy was on the other end of fifth street and we you did have to walk upstairs to get into the pharmacy and we had a, an elderly lady who was just spry and active and you know, you would never dreamed. And one day she came into the pharmacy and I, I saw her coming. And as she got to the top step, I saw her go down. And mm -hmm. so I went running out there. Well, just her walking up the steps, she had broken a hip. Broke hip. All she was doing was walking up steps. Yeah. And, um, you know, she, she recovered and did well for a long time. But, you know, it's scary to think stepping off the curb, on the curb, or walking up or down a, pair, a set of steps could be enough if your bones are weak enough to yeah. break a bone. So, you know, we got to take care of those bones. We got to. Um, so please make sure that you're eating a really good calcium rich diet. I prefer calcium out of foods, what, what everybody does. Of course, we've talked about our foods are very depleted. So please make sure you're getting a good quality calcium supplement. Um, if you're, if you're insistent, if you can't you know, afford it, it is a little more expensive than the, you know, $4 bottles. If that's what you need, you've got to make sure you take those with an acidic food. So orange juice, a big meal, um, you can actually buy acid supplements over the counter to ensure that you're getting the best absorption that you can. But you're going to want to make sure um, with those products that you're taking magnesium to balance it out. And you need to be on some good vitamin D. What foods have calcium in them? All your dark green stuff. Okay. Kales, spinach, broccolis. Okay. Um, and then there are people that are now, a lot of the people we've talked about primal diet before, some people do make their own bone broth meals. So the you what? basically bone broth. bone broth. So it's like making chicken stock, but you yeah. make sure you use all the bones okay. Um, okay. and get bone marrow into that okay. so that you're going to get some good nutritional calcium benefits okay. if you do that. And honestly, if you do it right, it just tastes like chicken broth. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't taste like bone marrow. So don't anybody get upset or think it sounds gross. Cause really, uh, it's just what like, does that taste like? <laughs> Well, and there are people that actually cook, you know, yep. big things of bone and eat the bone marrow out of it. I have not done it. I don't know if it's any good. They say it's delicious. But bone broth is just like drinking, you know, just soup broth. It's, yep. You know, if you flavor it right and put the right stuff in it, it's going to be delicious no matter what you put in it. <laughs> um, make sure you take a good vitamin D. Um, and the thing about vitamin D is that you don't absorb, even get your vitamin D absorption well enough if it doesn't have, if you're not taking a vitamin K2 supplement, which is in most good multivitamins, okay. or if you don't have enough fatty acids. So if you're taking a vitamin D product and your levels aren't going up, then think about adding a fish oil to it. That'll increase your absorption. And then we actually have a new vitamin D product at the pharmacy that is a liquid emulsified with some fats for proper absorption. It goes up to 10,000 10, units per dropper full. So it's a little bottle, but you have a huge range of whatever mm -hmm. dose you need. So instead of having to worry about what pill you take, you just measure out the droppers um, to get the proper dose of vitamin D. Put that in something or just you drops just, in your mouth? Just put it in your mouth. In you your can mouth. mix okay. it with something, yeah. but yeah, just just drop it in your mouth and, yeah. and take a drink of water or juice or milk or whatever you want to drink. Um, do not sit on your couch. You know, we all talk about getting up and being active, but the best way to keep your bones strong is to actually be on your bones. So as, as much as I'm a huge fan of swimming as an exercise, it's not really that good for your bones. So I don't, you don't need to go run a marathon, but just go walk. 
get out there to where you're weight bearing carry some you know if you if you don't have weights carry a couple soup cans in your hand or something to add a little weight to you do some push-ups if you can but walking doing anything that you're on your bones forcing that compaction of the bones uh, you know we do it with horses when we're trying to make sure our horses legs have strong bones we we jog them on the pavement because that pounding although it is a little concussive it, it encourages new bone growth okay. so get out there and, and be on those bones using them you swimming if you're trying to if you got a broken bone and you can't put weight on That's it, right. then you keep that, that keeps the muscles going in the cardiovascular system. Yeah, right. swimming is a phenomenal exercise. Yeah. It's so great for the cardiovascular system. It's, it's just not the best for bones. The so bones. that being said, I'm sure that the people that swim a lot because they're so fit and healthy mm -hmm. probably have decent bones. But if you're really wanting to focus just on your bones, walking is going to be your best bet. Please stop smoking. Smoking drains your bones of good nutrients. Um, not only does it do that, but smoking also affects your vasculature. Mm -hmm. People that are smokers have worse blood vessels than diabetics. And we all know about what happens with diabetics and, and leg amputations. But if you don't have good blood flow through your body because you're a smoker, you're not going to grow good bone. Yeah. So smoking is a huge risk factor. Lots of alcohol consumption, which leads to lots of things um, down the road. But if you drink excessively, you're going to have weaker bone mass. So... Family history we talked about, and you little bitty, little bitty skinny women, which uh, unfortunately are getting fewer and far between these days, but the little skinny women tend to have higher rates of fractures. And um, that's, we're not really sure, I know, I'm sure I learned about it in pharmacy school, but we really think it has to do with because they are so small, they don't have a whole lot of weight um, to really compress those bones to grow them. So they, for all their life, they haven't. Right. Yeah. And they used to say if you could, you know, depending on if you can really wrap around your wrist and you can overlap your thumb and finger, you're a high risk. So this is kind of how you tell, are you a thin frame or not? And are you at risk? So, but everybody needs to be looked at for metabolic bone disease. Lots of medications are going to deplete you of all these nutrients. So, you know, a lot of prescription medications put you at risk for osteoporosis, especially the stuff that lowers your stomach acid. So uh, make sure that you're taking care of those bones. Okay. We've got lots of things coming up uh, during the, the next few weeks. Uh, Relay for Life, of course, uh, is, uh, is a uh, honoring of those that have died from cancer and those that have survived from cancer. You talked so many times about uh, the fact that uh, a good lifestyle, can as you mentioned today, uh, can prohibit uh, cancer or decrease the, the chances of cancer. Uh, baby fair this weekend. Out That's at right. The, out at the um, hospital, Flash A's Baby Fair, uh, for everybody that uh, uh, is having or planning to have it's a good, great opportunity to be out there and i'm sure medica will be represented at flash baby fair number 12 i think it is yeah. and I, we actually have two um really nice gift baskets with our infamous snot sucker in each one of them <laughs> and we also i mentioned uh, i think a couple radio shows ago the new um, very non-toxic um, baby skincare line mm -hmm. of Earth Mama Baby Angel. Mm -hmm. So there is some variety of, of those products in the gift baskets. So, uh, and then, well, I think, sure, we'll have our breast pumps. So you can see the breast pumps. And for anybody that needs a breast pump, we're actually, if you rent a breast pump, you're actually getting some free Earth Mama Baby Angel products, specifically Ooh. their lip balm, which is amazing if you've not tried it. So okay. giving some of that away there. Oh. And then and also, in the, coming up in the very near future, the Nelson County Community Clinic, uh, is having their annual dinner and auction, and I know that uh, Medica is, is a big supporter of our community clinic here for the things that they do to help those that are underinsured, employed but underinsured, uh, helping them get their uh, health taken care of. It is, and the art auction, if you've never been, is a wonderful event. It is, you know, good food and beautiful artwork, and there's, you know, the live auction and the silent auction, and um, I actually have a good friend of mine that's actually donated a couple of pieces of art to it this year, so there are quite a few of us will be there okay. uh, from Medica. Some of our Medica family and friends will be there to support the clinic, but it's a great cause, so if you've never been, you know, get a ticket and come. It's a great time. Anything else new at Medical? Um, starting on May 1st, we're reintroducing our free vitamin program. Okay. So uh, we're, you know, partnered with United Way over this. I think that's right. I know uh, Garrett had been talking to Kenny Fogel, so okay. if that's not a done deal yet, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure that, <laughs> uh, that we are partnered with United Way to help us promote the, the health of our kids in our community. Okay. So they can learn more about that through Medica? Or through, yes. Okay. So it's, um, yeah, you come in, you have to do have to sign up, and we will actually fill them as a prescription so we can kind of keep track of, you know, know you get them, and, okay. um, and it is free it's free for the first year and then you know from there after that you know we'll go with it are we going to continue it free I think we probably will um, but it's a great program and we're excited to have a really good vitamin that um, not only is better quality but tastes a lot better than the vitamin we had last time so we're really excited about it. <laughs> 
Tastes great. That's right. That was a commercial for beer, I think, so you probably shouldn't have, shouldn't have used that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is a kindergarten through fifth grade. Kindergarten so through fifth grade. Okay. No, no, uh, no beer commercials involved. <laughs> okay. Less filling tastes great. I remember now. Uh, well, Allison, thank you very much. And again, uh, anybody that needs more information, uh, they can check you guys out online, Facebook, or just come on in the stores. That's right. All right. That's our for your health program today, a presentation of medical pharmacy uh, with two convenient locations here uh, in Bardstown, just up the street, uh, up at 4th and West Stephen Foster, and of course also in Shepherdsville. So thank you, and again, if you ever have a question, drop by and see any of the fine folks at Medical Pharmacy.